Hello everybody, so I know that I'm about to get a lot of hate on this video, but these things need to be said because there's a ton of misinformation out there from other YouTubers about the Oculus Quest 2. The Quest 2 is not a good PC VR headset. It's cheap, but it's a headset full of compromises. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Quest 2, as well as showing you benchmarks running the games wirelessly from a PC using virtual desktop compared to an original Vive with the wireless adapter. And before anybody asks, yes, I also did do some benchmarks using the link cable as well. The performance was definitely better on the Quest, but there was still some issues like compression. I also wanted to focus specifically on wireless PC VR since that's how I play games myself. And personally, I think that that's a huge game changer for VR in general. So the link cable benchmark will not be in this video. And I also tried using ALVR to stream PC games to the Quest. I know some people think that that improves it um, over virtual desktop, but personally, I didn't actually notice a huge difference between that and virtual desktop. I tried both and virtual desktop was easier to record these benchmarks with and set up since the UI is better. Um, so that's what's gonna be in this video. As for my Wi-Fi, I was using a dedicated 5 GHz router. No, I did not try a 6 GHz router and I'm not planning to buy one because of the issues with latency and compression and performance, which is not going to be solved even by using a 5 GHz router and I will go over that in this video. Um, so alright, well, let's get started. So the Quest 2 is a fully mobile 6 degrees of freedom room skill headset. You don't need a PC, you can bring this thing anywhere, and I thought that was amazing. The resolution is also the best out of any other headset I've tried. And this is the first headset where I feel like I can actually watch full movies in, um, like Amazon, Netflix. That's actually what I've been using this the most for. Um, the, unlike previous headsets, there isn't really a, any kind of noticeable screen door effect, which is awesome. The first time I put this on, I was kind of mind blown about how clear it was. As for comfort and sound, other reviewers on YouTube have gone over this. The default strap that comes with the Quest 2 is absolutely horrible. I couldn't stand wearing that thing for more than like 20 minutes, so I ended up buying an Elite strap, which was a lot better. Um, I could wear it now for a couple of hours, but there was still, there was like a weird uh, hard area in the back of my scalp. Uh, so even with the Elite strap, it got pretty uncomfortable after like an hour, hour and a half. And it was nowhere near the comfort of the deluxe audio strap, which I have for my original Vive. Um, that thing is very comfortable. Now I want to point out that there is a way that you can hack on the deluxe audio strap to the Quest 2. Um, I think it's called a Franken Quest. You can use it with a 3D printer. There's some information on that, probably online somewhere. Um, so, you know, that's that. The audio got the job done. It wasn't anything special. Um, it wasn't great audio. But you know, for a, for a mobile headset, it does the job, uh, but you will probably want to plug in your own headphones. All right, now let me get to the meat of this video and why the Quest 2 is not a good PC VR headset, especially if you plan to play wirelessly. So number one, the Quest 2 has a super high resolution display and you're trying to encode the video over virtual desktop from Wi-Fi. The bandwidth on five or six gigahertz Wi-Fi is not enough to do that without compression or latency. Even with six gigahertz, you are getting a compressed image and at a minimum, 20 to 30 milliseconds of latency, which can really mess with your head in VR. To have good VR, uh, it needs to be close to real life. Um, kind of imagine yourself moving in real life. You don't have latency when you're moving your hands. Like look at your hands right now. Uh, do you notice any kind of latency in the movements? Um, the problem with doing a quest over Wi-Fi is, you know, People can notice it. I'm I'm someone that notices, uh, you know, really fine movements in VR. I don't get motion sick, but not having smooth VR in fast moving games like Beat Saber and things like that, that will annoy me. Um, so that's something to note. Number two, uh, virtual desktop and the Quest 2 is not optimized for PC. So it's gonna push your PC harder than it would versus running like a dedicated PC VR headset either, either over a wire or with the Vive using the wireless adapter. It's trying to encode and send footage while also trying to run VR games at the same time. The Vive wireless has better software for doing this. 
and uh, virtual desktop or ALVR, ALVR, excuse me, um, is pushing your system harder than it should be running when you're running these games. So you're gonna have performance problems. And number three, it's not running the Quest 2 as just a display. I've talked about this online several times, uh, but when you run a PC VR game to a Quest, even using the link cable, it's encoding the footage, sending the quest, sending the footage um, to the Quest Snapdragon XR2 processor, and that's a mobile processor, and then it's decoding it and sending it to the Quest. So you're essentially getting a mobile processor that's trying to encode HD PC VR footage. So it doesn't matter how good your PC is, you are bottlenecked by the actual Quest. All right, and now I'm just gonna run through some benchmarks comparing the Quest 2 running virtual desktop wirelessly uh, to stream PC VR games compared to an original HTC Vive using the wireless adapter. I tried to keep this fair and I super sampled the HTC Vive to a similar resolution of the native 100% Quest resolution. The Vive was actually running a little bit higher um, because I couldn't get it to the exact amount. Um, so keep that in mind as you're watching this. And I showed some of the more popular VR games like Beat Saber, Blade and Sorcery, things like that. I did not record the latency of the Quest 2, but I can tell you that it was, it never went below 20 milliseconds and it was hovering around 32 milliseconds um, the entire time, which is going to probably be your experience. Even if you have a dedicated six gigahertz uh, router, you're not going to get below that amount of latency. Um, so also keep that in mind as you're watching this. All right, and here is the super sampling settings that I use. So the Oculus Quest 2 is at 100% SS and it's 2496 times 2592. The OG Vive is running at 260% SS. So that's 2436 times 2708. So keep in mind the OG Vive was actually running at a higher resolution here in my benchmarks and it was performing overall uh, better. Um, so right away you can see in the Steam VR Home, the Oculus Quest 2 running on virtual desktop is already getting some uh, degradation in performance. Um, there was also a little bit of latency just inside of Steam VR Home. Uh, this is before I even tried any of the games or anything. Um, and we'll move on to some of the benchmarks. All right, so the first game I tried was Beat Saber. Uh, Beat Saber was fine for the most part using the, the Quest 2 wirelessly. Um, I definitely noticed the increase in clarity of like hitting the notes and stuff, but you also can't get fun things using the Quest, like full body tracking, which I could get with the Vive. Um, now, when I when I was actually playing the game, um, the, the, like I said, the resolution was nice, but there was noticeable latency for me when I was hitting these blocks. Uh, so you can see in the footage that I, I'm actually missing more blocks, even though I've done this song a fair number of times uh, with the Quest because it just felt very delayed to me, um, which just affected my performance overall. Uh, there, there wasn't like an issue with performance in this game, but there was definitely an issue with latency as I was playing it. All right, moving on to Blade and Sorcery. Um, again, with this one, the performance wasn't really terrible with the with the Quest 2, it was pretty decent. Um, there was still some problems with latency, so it just wasn't as fluid as using my Vive. Um, also, I wasn't able to get fun things like full body tracking, which is only natively supported on Steam VR. Um, and in my opinion, that's a complete game changer for this game specifically because uh, you can kick with your actual legs, which makes this game awesome. Um, but other than that, it was, you know, it was fine. I did notice that when there was a lot of enemies on the screen, um, I'll go through the footage here in the second, uh, the performance was a lot worse on the Quest 2 than the Vive, even though the, the Vive um, was running at a higher resolution technically. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. The resolution though, that did make a big difference on the on the quest. I can admit that the um it was the resolution was great. Uh, you know, there wasn't any screen door effect when I was fighting these enemies. So that that was awesome to experience for sure. Um, but just the, the performance and the fluidity of combat uh, did feel a lot better on the Vive for me. All right, the next game that I tried was Tales of Glory. This was an interesting one. Uh, the raw data, at least from FPS VR, was showing better um, frame times 
on the quest, at least for some of the scenes that I was in. But in actual gameplay, uh, it didn't really feel like that. Um, the Vive felt smoother, even, you know, you can see running at a higher resolution. It was just a, it felt smoother in actual gameplay. And the quest was a garbled mess when it came to the actual uh, footage. There was a ton of compression going on with all of these soldiers running. Um, so anything 10 feet in front of me was being compressed into a blurry uh, mess of an image. Um, and again, there was a lot of latency. So it was hard to fight enemies. And um, it, you know, it was an okay experience, but I would not recommend this on the quest um, specifically because the compression was really bad. I don't know if you can see from the footage here. Um, it was just very blurry the entire time. All right, last but not least is Fallout 4 VR uh, using my optimized mod list that I made with Wabjack. This is where you're gonna see the biggest differences between the uh, Quest 2 and the Vive uh, running at a super sampled resolution. I normally don't even run uh, the resolution this high in the Vive, but you know, regardless, you can see right away the performance on the Quest 2 is, in my opinion, totally unacceptable. Um, it was laggy, it was running at less than 45 frames per second most of the time, whereas the Vive with the higher resolution was keeping between uh, 70 and 80 frames per second, even hitting 90 in some areas, and even going inside um, to an inside area with not a lot going on, the Quest 2 was barely able to hit a solid 70 to 80 frames per second, whereas the Vive was hitting close to 90, it was sticking between 80 to 90 at a, a higher resolution, as you can see. Um, so, anyways. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the Oculus Quest 2? I think that the Oculus Quest 2 is a very good mobile VR headset. Um, I love it for watching movies or just casual experiences with like friends or family doing co-op and like rec room or VR chat or something. But do I think this, that this holds up as a PC VR headset? I'm going to be honest, it doesn't. Um, you saw the benchmarks for yourself. I don't think that it, this compares at all to a Vive wireless when it comes to compression, when it comes to latency, fluidity, when you're moving in VR games. Um, the resolution on this thing is great, but there's a lot more to virtual reality gaming than just the resolution, at least for me. Um, I would rather have a low resolution display, but more fluid movement um, in games and being able to move around more, being able to do things like full body tracking. Uh, that's important for me. Um, but if you're looking for casual things or to watch movies, then the Quest 2 is great. But if you are primarily going to be doing PC VR, I would urge you to look for a dedicated headset like the Valve Index, like the HP Reverb if you want better visuals. Um, there's issues with the HP Reverb um, or the Vive, even like a Rift S. Um, getting a Quest 2 and then using it specifically for PC VR gaming, I just don't think in the long run that it's going to hold up. All right, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, hopefully, I don't get too much hate for this video. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of new VR users out there that got a Quest 2 for, for Christmas or something, and I basically just spent the last 15 minutes shitting all over that headset. Um, but I think the information needed to be out there because people are expecting the Quest 2 to be similar to a dedicated PC VR headset when they hook it up to their PC. Uh, wirelessly or even using the link cable, um, which in reality, that's just not going to be the case. So you have to set your expectations accordingly. Um, but anyways, like I said, it's not a bad headset, but for PC VR, it is definitely compromised. So other than that, I almost hit 2000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone that watches these videos and, and likes them. <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See ya.